So good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Daniela Jurgen, and I support uh, small businesses and entrepreneurial efforts at the Washington DC Economy Partnership. Um, for those of you who might not be uh, familiar with the partnership, um, our mission is to promote business opportunities in DC through business retention, expansion, and attraction initiatives. Uh, on behalf of the partnership, the Office of the Deputy Mayor for Planning and, um, Planning and Economic Development, um, and our partners at the DC Women's Business Center and the Anacostia Economic Development Corporation, I would want I want to thank you um, for our uh, I want to welcome you and thank you for attending this this chat today on how to grow your e-commerce through customer engagement. So before we begin, uh, here are a few housekeeping items. And um, today's webinar is being recorded, so we will share a link with you after the event. Um, it would also be posted on our events page and on YouTube. So please feel free to share with your contacts. Um, also, um, for today, please uh, utilize the chat windows to share your comments, thoughts, and communicate with each other. Uh, if you have any questions for our panelists, um, please utilize the Q&A. Uh, we will do our best to answer your questions, but if we don't get through it today, um, feel free to shoot us an email and we will connect with you and have that answer. Uh, closed captioning is available on today's session, so please feel free to utilize that. Uh, a reminder to everyone, uh, at the partnership, we value everyone's opinions and respect diversity, so please do the same and respect each other while using the chat window. Um, so moving on to this chat, if today is your first this chat, um, so yeah, the this chat series um, is um, the partnership signature workshops series. Um, that supports local businesses by providing expert advice, resources, and practical uh, solutions. So we bring together thought leaders and local businesses who are able to share their expertise with us. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to kind of thank our sponsor, uh, Capital One. Um, they have been a partner of ours um, for the Beach Chat, um, providing support to allow us to bring together this sort of programming uh, to you. Um, so we continue to thank Capital One for their continued support. Um, I also would like to take um, the opportunity to thank um, Demper, the Office of the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development for being um, a primary partner for the past 20 years um, as we continue to work, collaborate, co uh, work collaboratively to and support businesses and entrepreneurs looking to open, expand, and invest in DC. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Heidi uh, with the DC Women's Business Center to welcome you all and give you an overview of the DC Women's Business Center. Thank you, Daniela. Can we have the next slide? Thank you. So hi, everybody. I am Heidi Shepard. I'm the project director for the DC Women's Business Center. And I'm so glad to be partnering with um, the DC Washington DC Economic Partnership on this very interesting panel exchange. I'm sure that um, you all will get a lot out of it. I'm looking forward to it uh, as well. Uh, next slide, please. So I just wanted to let you know uh, a little bit about the DC Women's Business Center. Uh, our mission is really to empower women entrepreneurs to build resilient and successful businesses strengthen their community's economy and create wealth for their families. We envision a thriving ecosystem of women entrepreneurs in the DC metro region who have the access to the tools, capital, knowledge, and networks to create a supportive environment in which to grow their businesses. The, women's, the DC Women's Business Center is part of a network of over 150 women's business centers across the country, all of which are funded by the Small Business Administration, and in our case, so we are support, also supported by the National Community Reinvestment Coalition. Next slide, please. We, um, hang on one second. Okay, we deliver our assistance in a variety of ways, one-on-one -on -one counseling, uh, webinars, training courses, peer-to-peer -peer exchanges such as this one, and through our website. Our, all of our, um, uh, delivery methods are free, 
and you can access information and to register for one-on-one -on -one counseling at our website, www.dcwbc.org. Next slide. Here are some upcoming events. Uh, we have an event tomorrow on exit strategies and business valuation. Um, then on April 26th, we have um, somebody from SBA, an expert on SBA funding and the, um, the rescue plan, and somebody from our community development fund talking about funding and how to make the best of both of these um, resources. We have a webinar on April 28th on introduction to financial management and bookkeeping. And then a webinar on, um, I don't know why it says April 28th, so something's not right there, but that is <laughs> supposed to be May 11th. Uh, women entrepreneurs want to start a business, we can tell you how. You can get more information on these webinars, register for them, as well as uh, find out other webinars that are coming up in May and June and um, on our website, dcwbc.org. I don't know if there's another slide. That's it. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy uh, the panel discussion. Oh, thank you, Heidi. Um, our other community partner um, that um, have, has partnered up with us um, for this this chat was uh, or is the Anacostia uh, Economic Development Corporation. Um, so the AB the ABC is kind of a community development corporation established to meet. Um, the economic needs on um, better the quality of life of DC residents and businesses, and um, specifically those in the Anacostia um, community, um, Southeast community. So um, they have actually uh, actually agreed to um, to um, provide technical assistance um, to some businesses um, that have expressed interest um, in technical assistance. Um, and also the DC Women's Business Center would be providing technical assistance as well. So we thank you to both, we thank both of them. Um, so I know by now you're probably tired of hearing me talk. Um, so uh, I'm gonna introduce um, our moderator, Libri Rasmussen. She's a social media director. Um, she's worked with a lot of local businesses in the DC area. So we're really happy to have her here today. Um, we also have Dr. Sunyata, the founder of Calabash, uh, with us today, and Mignon Doswell, and um, sorry, Daniel Doswell and Mignon Hens Henswell. I'm sorry, I'm butchering your name. Uh, they are the founders of Grounded Plants, and we are super excited to have them today. So I'm gonna pass the ball over to Libby. Um, thank you for being here today with us. Yes, we are so excited for this discussion today, and I would love to have this be, um, you know, hearing all the tips and tricks from our business owners here today, but also want to have this be a conversation. Um, I think that it's really great that we have so many participants. I know we got a lot of really great questions ahead of time, and um, I would love if you all utilized uh, the chat, as mentioned, we'd love to answer some questions throughout. Um, and if anyone has anything they'd like to notate or any insight as well, again, we would love to just have this be kind of a great conversation. As we saw from the poll earlier, many of you who are tuning in with us um, either have small businesses or are aspiring um, to have small businesses and have experience with e-commerce. So we would love to hear your insight as well. Um, because you're, you're going to hear, um, you know, stories from two businesses from, you know, different walks of life and also like levels of experience, but both of them are absolutely just nailing it despite the, you know, this, the current events of the past year. And, um, obviously e-commerce has been a great, uh, tool for that. So without further ado, um, you know, we'll step into the conversation, um, and just wanted to maybe give like a little quick, um, you know, overview. Uh, you know, we have Dr. Sunyata, who's who's been a fifth generation wellness, and um, you know, has been 
such a great advocate for um, decolonizing the space of wellness. And you've had this business for, you know, quite a while in DC It is an establishment. It was one of my favorite places to go before the pandemic. I'd got some tea picked up a couple of weeks ago, which makes me feel like I have a little slice of, uh, or a little cup, I should say, of you all in my home, which is such a blessing. But if you want to give a little background on, you know, on your story really quickly and, um, you know, how, how, how you've been, how you doing? <laughs> uh, there we are. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you for having me today. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm honored that you've been by recently and picked up uh, some stuff from us, which just goes to show the power of uh, pivoting as needed to be able to use e-commerce as we're talking about today, uh, or whatever tools there are. In our case, we use e-commerce a lot for um, not being front-facing any longer. But in all the years that we've existed, uh, we've been front-facing, serving people, and using e-commerce. Um, our parents, my dad started this business in 1976, I believe. And um, so I grew up from the time before I could see over the counter uh, doing this. Um, he's a biologist by training and an ethnobotanist specifically. So the study of tropical plants and the study of um, medicinal tropicals, et cetera, which I know the other ladies do a lot with uh, tropical stuff. And he's been studying that uh, uh, stateside and in Cuba and in the Caribbean and South and Central America since the 60s. So our growing up uh, in our business also meant that we had, uh, we were the weird kids who were vegetarian. We were the kids who uh, had a relationship with plants, both edible and non-edible. And our job at Calabash really, uh, as you mentioned, is decolonizing wellness. That wellness is mental, spiritual, physical, and we design our spaces so that when people walk in, it should be an oasis in the city. Uh, an alternative to maybe a bar or any other uh, coffee shop, and that this is something people can do for themselves with regard to wellness. So our job is really to connect modern people to ancient ways of healing, and uh, our mission is also to hire as many people as we can that are folks from our community that are graduates or students at Howard that are uh, other Black women that we can support in business and work together with. And that is the underlying mission of our parents' original business that we carry with us is business activism. So that's super important to us. Our location in Brooklyn now is our third uh, DC location. And uh, we're just really happy to be in DC. I, I'm, a, I'm a New Yorker, I grew up in New York, but I've been here in DC for, I wanna say like 22 years now. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad to have raised my children. Uh, one is 36 and one is 17. Uh, I get the what were you thinking award, but <laughs> it's great to have your children working with you. Uh, my grandchildren as well work with us. Uh, a lot of times they're around and that means a lot that we can generation, generationally, is that a word? Generationally, um, <laughs> pass business on to the folks that are under us, making sure that it, in our village concept of business, it really is a village and we envelop the people who work with us. Uh, what our goal is, is to make sure that our whole crew is on the come up, that our managers who've been with us, our property owners, they start buying houses, they start living lives in different capacities. They may have come in with a backpack on and they were a student at Howard. Now they're married and you know got a mortgage or whatever. And that's our goal. So our business is really rooted in community. So I, I appreciate you asking. That's incredible. I can kind of see the wheels turning it for Danielle and Mignon kind of like, huh, this sounds like a really inspiring. I know I'm inspired by that. By old ladies. <laughs> well, I mean, just it's incredible the the way that you have chosen to um, really put care first. And, you know, of course, with the healing powers of so many different properties of the products that you have, but also the care in which you, you know, give when someone comes through the door. 
um, at Calabash and in this case now, you know, online. So I can see, I, I love kind of grounded. I'm sure you guys are thinking like, how do we kind of get this business model into our, uh, our train of thought for the next couple of, you know, 20 or so years into the future. Yeah, of but, course. Yeah, but the it has to be it has to be predicated on that. Um, the very first thing when people walk in is we ask them how we can help to heal them today. That's a question that everyone is asked when they walk in the door. So we're not just like throwing coffee in people's faces or whatever. We really are uh, wanting to know. And our parents were Black Panthers, and their foundational essence was providing food for people, these, these uh, breakfast programs and lunch programs for children, understanding that if you can influence people's food and wellness, then you can influence like where they are. Definitely. I think that that's, that sounds like maybe something that's applicable to uh, Danielle and Mignon at Grounded. So you all are kind of coming into um, people's spaces in their homes, which is kind of like the, you know, the flip side of it. Um, and you're meeting people like in their spaces and coming to them or their offices, things like that. Um, I want to give you all an opportunity to talk about your story. I know that you just celebrated or will be celebrating tomorrow. Is it your first year anniversary, which is just absolutely incredible. Um, you know, if you can make it during the pandemic and have a year anniversary, like now, I think that that's really exciting for other potential business owners to see the success of that. And you all should be so, so proud, um, but would love to hear more about, uh, the two of you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Daniel and I have been friends for a pretty long time now. And we actually like our foundation of our friendship was bonding over our plants and cooking and food. Like we were always, she actually pulled up a picture in her phone of me sending her my house plants. And so that's initially how we began our business. Um, it was last year or the year before last in October of 2019, 2019. Um, we kind of like, it was a tweet. Is kind of what initiated the conversation. Danny Wells sent me a tweet saying that 33% of millennials are the main buyers of houseplants. And I wrote her back. I was like, I'm going to open a plant shop. I had no intentions on opening a plant shop. And she wrote me back, like, if you're serious, like, let's actually do it. And from there, we saw how plants affected us and our mental health, our physical health, our emotional health. And we just wanted to spread that message to our consumers. So if you go to like our Instagram or our website, we're very, very informative. Often like posting pictures of like graphs or diagrams to help people own a house plan. Cause it kind of can be a daunting task. A lot of people are like, oh, I have a black thumb. I don't think I can do it. But we realize that most of our consumer base are beginner plant parents. And so we want to like nurture them in that, create a community around that and ensure that people feel comfortable um, just relating to nature. That's super important to us. We think that everyone should enjoy nature, be able to connect with nature and see like the mental and physical benefits of it. Um, and yeah, so with our business, that's like one of our main aspects is incorporating mental health, um, just like mental health tips. And also we do corporate gifting. So we ship plants to different businesses. Right now we, we're working on one for ESPN, which we're super, super excited about. Wow, and congrats. We do webinars. So we have like different corporations that want to do like a um, disconnecting and decompressing after work with plants. And so we'll do like an hour, hour and a half webinar, um, send their employees plants, talk about them, the healing benefits, uh, what type of water to use on your plants, just like a whole general aspect of plant care. And then we also do plantarior design, which is like a spin on interior design. So we'll go into different businesses, um, assess their space, their maintenance requirements, and place different plants into their spaces. So that's um, kind of a general aspect. Of course, like day to day, we're virtual D2C. We ship plants all around the country. Um, we've shipped as far as the Virgin Islands. Um, our, one of our biggest consumer bases right now is in Los Angeles in that area. So do a lot of like cross country shipping. Um, and yeah, we're coming up on our one year anniversary, which we're super excited about. Um, just figuring out ways to, you know, pivot with our business 
because you never know what can happen in the world and you just want to make sure you're always ready and you're always thinking one step ahead. Um, should I say anything? No, you completely did <laughs> uh, great. That was a really great introduction. Yeah, to- I, I love what you said about, um, you know, how you started off. You were like, we saw this statistic on Twitter and we're like, this isn't, th- we're identi- you identified your audience like immediately. And then you were like, this is a gap in the market, or maybe this is a gap, um, you know, like we can see the rise of this kind of coming up and the need for this. And like, I think that so many times people will just kind of, um, you know, punch themselves, uh, you know, a couple of years later because they'll be like, oh, I had that idea and I held myself back from doing it. And I think that it sounds like, you know, if you guys were in discussions about this in 2019, you acted fast and like you really kind of jumped on it. And I think that that's really commendable because I think so many times with um, small businesses, we kind of want everything to maybe be super perfect. And of course, looking at the work that you do, you know, you would think, I would think every time you put out a graphic on your Instagram, I'm like, this is incredible. Like, did this take them like a whole week to make? This is amazing. But I, you know, knowing both of you and whatnot, I know that it just comes to mind and you're like, we got to tell people how to take care of fungus gnats on their plants. And we're going to make an infographic and it's going to be beautiful and well marketed and whatever. And clearly that's really um, translating to your consumers because you're choosing to kind of educate first and then, you know, sell something to, you know, then market the product. Um, And I think that that really closely aligns to, you know, what Calabash has done for so long by asking customers when they walk through the door, how can we help you? How can we, what do you need help healing with today? You are taking away from the, you know, the product being face first and kind of you know, shoving it in people's faces, which I think a lot of people feel, especially now e-commerce can tend to be right. There's no, there's a lack of heart behind the, um, the story, or maybe that story, or maybe that business has a lot of heart to it, but it takes the business owner to actually explain why it matters or explain why, um, you know, having a cup of tea can really help heal you from the inside out or a a house plant can like drastically make your working at home experience like so much better. Um, So I think that that's a really valuable lesson for anyone who's um, tuning in today, you know, that even there's always a, there's always some kind of heartstring to, um, you know, a product or a service and making sure that you kind of lead with that and make sure, making sure that your messaging is heard. I mean, when you go on to your website or you're selling things that, you know, that about page is like really, you know, full or impactful, or maybe if it's not on your about page, it's echoed through your social media regularly. And so I think that both of you have done just an absolutely incredible job of doing that. I don't think that either, either brands, like it's, it's just, it just stands out to you. And I think that that's such a valuable lesson for, um, for those who are thinking about starting the business and just getting started, you know, like, I, I don't know, Dr. Signora, how, I mean, having it be in your family, um, you know, did that almost make you like not want to do it right away? Or uh, did, did that kind of propel you into going in and being like, I'm going to modernize this. You said it started, you know, back five generations ago, I'm sure that you are probably the first to think of e-commerce a little more seriously than, you know, than dad was? Uh, That's a great question. First of all, I never thought I'd be doing this. Um, Not quite like this, Uh, but I don't, I don't also don't think I had much of a choice. (laughs) uh, At the same time, I think I was born for this and you know that it's something that is for you or belongs to you when it authentically comes out of you and people feel it. And then that's what you end up doing. Um, So sometimes you're fighting the very thing that you actually needed to move toward. Like I heard from the ladies and they're like, oh, if you're serious or are you, you know, and then you come together, you kind of needed the magnetism sometimes, uh, the pace horse of another person. It's like, yeah, it's actually a thing we should do. Um, There was no e-commerce. Uh, when my <laughs> one generation before me, like I said, I'm old lady. There was, I have been on the internet since 1995 or 94, you know, like when the internet was first starting out. Uh, so there weren't a lot of people even on the internet then. So imagine um, that 
this is the first generation of people, whether it's me or the other young ladies here that is actually using e-commerce in those capacities. Um, I also want to go back to what you said, which, which is poignant on starting businesses um, that oftentimes I myself, I know that this is a message I give myself when I say it to everyone else is that for me, a lot of times perfection is the enemy of execution. So I will want something to be exactly a certain way. I am very specific. My staff will tell you that about how things should be, what our standards are. And there are times that there are lines within our uh, brand that could be that can be more forward, much like the e-commerce is now. Uh, but I wanted it to be a certain way. And sometimes it's the, uh, like you mentioned, the matter of just getting started. And then you figure out the other stuff as you go through. Um, so because uh, many of us are waiting for those perfect moments, perfect scenarios, perfect website, perfect whatever, it just doesn't happen. And um, it, you really just have to pull the trigger sometimes. And it is good to speak to other people who have experience. Um, I oft tell my staff that mastery cannot be microwaved. It's nothing that you can know today. And although you may wanna pull the trigger on something, you also need, just like any other village, just like an African village, you must go to elders. You need to talk to other people. Um, otherwise you spend a lot of time, energy and money failing and at least learn from what other people, it's like relationships. You, you really want to ask people who've been married a couple of times and they'll tell you things you need to know or avoid, you know, red flags. You're like, ah, you know, so this is, this is an opportunity to hear about red flags from people who know. Definitely. And I think that there's so much um, conversation out there about, um, especially for women, like being a, like a self-made woman and like a self-made business and things like that. When truly like the, some of the most successful business women I know, they asked so many questions along the way um, to one, save themselves from making those mistakes. Um, and then also not worrying about the perfectionism, like within their own heads, because they have someone else maybe who's had more experience or, um, you know, maybe has just like streamlined that situation, um, you know, give them a little pointer. And I think that that's so important, you know, especially with women in business. I see, I can only speak to the community that I'm in, which is women, mostly women. Um, but, you know, women, especially in DC, I find that there's a lack of um, competition with one another, like even amongst, uh, you know, competing like business entities in themselves. Um, I think that there's a lot of really great women who want to kind of collaborate on things, events, uh, you know, products, things like that, having features, stuff like that, um, and having things kind of showcased with one another. Um, Grounded, have you all experienced that? What kind of collaborations or things like that have you um, kind of worked on? I know, I know you mentioned ESPN and I, I know, I'm sure you have some like local things that maybe you've done also, but is there anything that you've kind of seen collaborative wise that have helped um, with e-commerce or anything like that? I know you also just had a really successful campaign with Dove, like you guys are just killing with the cor corporate contracts um, and collaborations, excuse me, but I'm sure that you, um, have had plenty of ideas maybe after the pandemic or things like that of collaborating with local businesses or um, combining forces on other e-commerce sites, other websites, other businesses? Yeah, I think um, our, our next steps look like more nonprofit work because the work that we are doing is like healing work with providing plans to different uh, spaces around the country we want to actually touch our community and start with like the younger generation like Dr. Uh, Sumiata had mentioned about her grandchildren we would love to work with children and do any type of community garden initiative anything that will really get their hands dirty at a younger age with, with all these kids on their iPads and cell phones and TikToks and <laughs> AV talk talks and all those apps and everything. Um, I think our next collaborative efforts would really look like nonprofit work. Uh, as far as like collaborating with local businesses, we're definitely always open. And you know, we're an ally to anyone in this area in any way that we can 
help or if it if it makes sense if it's the right fit we're we're always like down to like collaborate with people and is that is that mostly people like reaching out to you like what is what is your collaboration um you know experience like or dr senora if you want to speak to that as well um our experience has been people reaching out to us with opportunities because you know, as, um, as we've only been in business for one year, it's been really important for us to just lay our foundation and have our business model and really like optimize our business model and make sure that we're doing everything that we're supposed to do and everything correctly. And we're not just jumping at like the first collaboration or, you know, doing a lot of collaboration work. Again, it really, um, our, our vetting process is not too extensive, but it really has to feel like organic and like make sense to our business because again, we're only one year old. So we really want to just like really weigh in and like, like do our work um, intentionally. And yeah, like that's, that's been sort of our, our experience thus far with collaborations. We've, um, I, I believe Dove reached out like July of 2020. So like last year, and we sort of talked about the collaboration for months and brainstormed different ideas. And of course, like extensive paperwork and all of these different things that had to get taken into effect. And then we rolled out the campaign. And we also did collaborate with um, another company, another digital uh, graphic design company. And that was like a cool collaboration around like Cyber Monday and that, that sort of came the same way um, where we were approached with the opportunity and we put our heads together and collaborated. But I think in the future, we'll probably switch that around and do our own like outreach based off of things that we want to pursue. Wonderful. Yeah, I think that that's great. Um, so as we've kind of, you know, transitioned from, you know, grounded, you've, you've, all you've probably known is e-commerce, you know, a kind of that e-relationship with your clientele through social media, things like that. I, I would imagine social media has been your number one tool for, um, you know, exposure and things like that. Although I did see you as featured in Oprah, was that online or Martha Stewart? Was it Martha Stewart? <laughs> Very cool. It's so cool. We love, yeah, we love press wherever it comes from, but that's a really exciting thing. Um, but Dr. Senyata, I guess what my question, and I'm sure a lot of um, participants do too, is what was it like, especially during the pandemic? Um, I mean, I, I noticed as a social media director, the, the shift that you all did and promotions and kind of really ramping up your social media. Um, you ha all have almost 19,000 followers, which is amazing, especially for um, a business. It's, it's, it's tough out there for businesses with algorithms and all of the things um, to really engage your audience. Um, have you seen success using Instagram and um, has that helped, uh, you know, convey, would you say it conveys more products or stories? So how would you um, say that that's helped? Uh, that's a great question. So social media, um, what we've found is it really depends on, um, a, a, there are certain demographics, I think, as we may all be aware, on different social media platforms. So we may have um, a, a slightly older, uh, more well-established, maybe people are moving toward retirement uh, folks in, on uh, like a 50 and over on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It skews a little bit younger for Twitter and then a little younger for Instagram. And the differences in this uh, are principally that people who are a little bit older have more money <laughs> mm -hmm. as, as can be expected. Uh, they want beautiful surroundings. They want plants. They want, um, they want wonderful things. Like this one goes almost up to my ceiling. If you can't see it, but it's really high. Um, <laughs> they want nice things in their homes. They want their yards and gardens to be beautiful and they have the money to support it. Um, generally speaking. 
So their disposable income is different. Their children may already have gone to university. So their money's a little more freed up. And now they've made a solarium, a plant room in their home or a sewing room or whatever. So they, they become plant parents, like you're mentioning there, or they have more time to make themselves tea in the morning instead of like, get out the door, everybody get your backpack on, let's go, let's go. I mean, that was my, that was my life for a long time because by the time one of my children was, 17 and graduating from school the I have a picture of my 17 year old holding the other child with and she has a cap and gown on and people oh. thought that was her child it's like that's my other baby so that meant that there were like there's like a 34 year span of raising children and once you finally get them uh, off out of the nest a little bit um, that eases up the opportunity to reach those folks for e-commerce and say, look, you have a little more disposable income. Actually, you need to take better care of yourself. You've been running behind these children or husbands or wives or whatever's going on, right? Spouses. Um, and this is an opportunity. And oftentimes people who, uh, oftentimes it's women or people who identify as, as female or whatever the case may be, that we may spend more time nurturing other people and so now this is an opportunity to nurture ourselves. And so our e-commerce, definitely, we worked on reaching those audiences instead of like some brands will uh, discount people who are over 40, like, ah, you know, they're over 40. Those are actually the ones. That's a really, that's a great, uh, you know, tidbit, because I think that so much of uh, e-commerce is focused on, on, um, Instagram and things like that. But I think that the, that Facebook, you're right. If that's also, you want to be talking to those people, obviously depending on your product, but you know, who's to say, you know, grounded, you know, they could find themselves with, I'm sure that they've seen this with their corporate, um, um, remind me of the term, the plant, um, when you do the plants for corporate businesses. Plantier? Plantier, yes. So I'm sure that once you expanded on that, you saw, you know, a, a higher price point for things, maybe uh, larger budgets for things like that. And that's where you're kind of um, expanding the demographics just beyond, you know, maybe your first time plant parent owner who's in maybe their 20s and they have their Ikea furniture and things like that. But you have, you can kind of go further with with that clientele. And I think that that's really important for those who are tuning in to really think about, um, you know, the demographics of the, of an age groups and things like that, that you are um, going to try to be marketing to, but then also remembering kind of those, uh, you know, that group adjacent or, you know, what could that look like? Maybe if you're selling tea marketing to um, men might actually be a really great idea because what a, you know, maybe giving the gift of tea to, you know, the mother of your children or whatever is a really beautiful gift, or instead of getting, giving flowers or things like that, getting a plant, you know? Well, so this really makes perfect sense. Not to cut you across, no, but go ahead. Um, a lot of times, both of our industries, uh, which are very closely related, uh, may, we may think of who our core customer is. Men love tea. Um, they love, and coffee, honestly, is a tea. Uh, you know, it's a hot water infusion of an herbal, uh, but we uh, sometimes discount the fact that everyone has taste buds or everyone loves green things and plants in their space to feel great. Um, and if we as owners of businesses don't pigeonhole and instead invite people into those wellness spaces, whatever they are, whatever they be, um, this opens our markets too. And it also opens the wellness. Everyone's invited to that lifestyle. It's an invitation. Um, and if I may say so, I mean, even being in, you know, Oprah, uh, Martha, Martha Stewart, or like we had a feature on Good Morning America, like a, a week and a half ago or whatever, yeah. the average person, I mean, just think about it. Who is Martha Stewart, you know, in her age range? Who is Oprah? Who is watching Good Morning America? So, you know, it makes sense that even being honored to be included in these publications means that that audience looks like that publisher. Mm -hmm. So it just makes sense. Yeah, definitely. I love, I love that. Um, we did get a great question um, from someone asking how 
you all have been able to stay in touch with your customers. And I think that this would be a really great question for you, Dr. Senora, because um, you know, before you were having people come in, you were able to kind of engage with clientele, see people firsthand right on their on their teacups. Have you thought, found any kind of similar alternatives to be able to stay connected and feel like you are still um, foster one, fostering new relationships, but also keeping in touch with, you know, um, past guests and clients and things like that? There are still ways to connect to people through e-commerce, making sure that each order has a personalized feeling, uh, recognizing someone's name, like, oh, I know that person and writing them a note and saying, hey, we haven't, we miss you too, or we, you know, and, and we can be inundated. Um, front facing, we could see in each location, 300 to 400 people a day for serving 300 to 400 people a day. And on the weekends, an uptick in that amount of people or holidays, like, you know, a Monday that is on a holiday or whatever the case is, like a government holiday. Um, in orders, it has translated in the same capacity. So it is different. At least people aren't standing there like, where's my product I just ordered? And the truth is that retail is completely different than uh, food service. Anyone who has worked in food service for any period of time, especially if you've worked in management, you know the aching feet, you know what it really is, you know, managing the people, ordering supplies, and also making sure that the customers who are standing there in your face are being served. The thing that is different about e-commerce is people do expect their product. However, they're not necessarily standing there in your face. It's not quite the same. Your rhythm can be a little different. Um, if you have extra sets of hands to help you package things, that can hope happen in hours that other people might have that are outside of what your normal operating hours would have been. So someone can uh, be working from 6 p.m. till midnight if that works for them to do that particular job. Um, that makes a huge difference. So staying in touch with our customers is great to give them product, reach out to them, but also uh, our employing our community and at, at safe distances and making sure that we have protocols in place that include taking into account we're in the middle of a plague. You know, so we have to we have to think about that. It's not like just everybody in the warehouse is like you, you can't operate that way. So we're very cautious about that too. And we want that to come across to our customers that we care about the fact that they're going to have this thing in their environment. And all we're sending them is that thing. We're not sending you anything else in the mail. I love that. That's great. And it sounds like um you've been able to really stay connected through. Um, also being able to delegate tasks to those within and not, not trying to do it all yourself. Um, I know that we had that discussion a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> of course. But it, I, we were talking about this before um, this conversation and um, the team from Grounded can maybe speak to it as well. Um, you all have been expanding um, just a little bit over the past few years beyond just the two of you all. Um, how has that helped for you to be able to um, kind of focus on maybe, you know, e-commerce or, um, you know, maybe when you're not packaging plants and cacti like around the clock, I'm sure you still do that because, you know, I feel like every business person is still, for lack of, you know, the term, you know, still sweeping the floors. Um, uh, how, how have you all navigated the, the system in that or the change in that? Well, for us, you know, initially we did like pack and ship every order. We did every single thing. Some days we would come in and I'm like, I'm HR for today. Uh, Daniel would say, she's like head of finance. Like we would, <laughs> we would literally like put on different hats every single day because we think it's important also like to kind of know the ins and outs of your business before you pass along a task to someone else because you never know like people come and go in your business we've had like our fair share of people who have worked with us um helping pack orders but it's like knowing your process and being able to explain it to someone and teach someone not only does that we teach it to you but you're also like spreading the knowledge to um the people that you employ so 
like I said, initially we were, we started off in Danny Wells mom's house in her basement. We had like her little brother, her, uh, her dad, like came into town. We were just all there packing orders and we would be there till like three o'clock in the morning. Even once we transitioned into our warehouse space, working long hours, 12 hour days, um, 60 hours a week, just like trying to do admin work in the morning, answer emails, try to, um, like set up a to-do list, but we would still end up being here all day. Um, but then once we realized that, you know, you can't run your business all by yourself. I know I have like kind of a controlling control complex where I'm like, I want to do everything, but um, you have to like give over that responsibility to people that you trust, of course. But if you want to expand, you have to be able to share your knowledge of your business and um, put that faith into other people. So for now, we have people who come in, they're warehouse managers, and they'll help pack, wrap, and um, process orders. And we mainly work on the more admin side, dealing with um, collaborations, doing all of our website upkeep, our social media, um, graphics, photography. If you can probably see in the back, our office is pretty small, but <laughs> we have like our, uh, our photo studio right here. And just like creating different tasks for the people who work for us is super important. Um, teaching them the ins and outs, telling them like all the stories of how we created our business is super important because we just want people to grow with us. And no um, pun intended. Yeah, no pun intended. Right, I love that. <laughs> we want the people who work for us to feel appreciated and to take something out of. Um, like from our rule book and apply it to their own life scenario. Yeah, we, like, we put our hands, we put our blood, sweat, and like I'm the one who cries <laughs> um, into our business um, since day one, like just like working and doing whatever it takes to make our business successful. Mm -hmm. And, then, you know, I would, I would like, I knew that I wouldn't be packing orders like for the rest of my time um, at our business, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I how important it was to see, to be able to, as Mignon said, like be able to pass that knowledge along to someone else, like be able to say, okay, this is how this plant can ship effectively and, and identifying different ways to improve the packaging to keep our product, which is the plant. Um, in some cases, like our accessories, like planters, how to keep those like secure and being able to have like to be able to get our hands dirty and not be too good to do anything here. Like whatever we need to do to whatever we need to do to get things done, we do it ourselves. Like we both have that can do attitude, like control attitude. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I even remember when we started growing our team and we would have people in here. And I had to like take a step back outside of myself and say, okay, like how do I become an effective leader? Like where where do I where do I uh, where am I flawed? Because it's like it's one thing to know your business, it's one thing to know how to ship a plant, but there's then there's the other side of being a leader, being able to like lead a team, being able to communicate effectively, and not just expect uh, the team to read our minds or read my mind and. You know, I would, there would be some times where I would just like, I would see something that wouldn't be right and I'll just step in and do it. And then I had to like take a step back and say, how can I communicate this better? Because another side of like, I think both of our personalities is, you know, being, being coming from like freelancer, uh, entrepreneurial uh, backgrounds, like, you know, we, we did everything ourselves. So we were our own boss and we were our own like, uh employer so it's like easy to be in that position but then on the other end it was also like it was also like being assertive and and taking our emotions out of the business and it's like you know we're not mean we sell plants we're not mean we crack <laughs> jokes in here and, and you know we're not intentionally trying to like make anyone uncomfortable but separating that that niceness from um, the leadership aspect of the business because things have to get done so you can't really attach yourself to the emotional part of it and and that was like a another step in being like an effective leader and, and of course always having empathy you know we we have people 
in here. We're always asking them how their day, how their day is, how's their weekend, um, anything that we can do to help them make things easier. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I've always, um, we always ask like how, how, um, like what their thought process is when it comes to something that we're asking them. We're not just like, hey, do this, and this is how we do it. We're like, what, what do you think works best for you? Or I'll say like, you know, we need you to do A, B, and C. Um, you should do B first, but what do you think about, like, what you should, what do you do? We try to, like, include them in our process and make them, make them feel like they're running this business, too, because they are, and as Mignon said, like, they're growing with us, so it's important for us to be um, effective leaders, be great leaders, kill, still keep, like, our compassion and our empathy um, inside of our, inside of our business, and make sure that that, make sure that things are getting done properly, done well and then we're still like adding a smile uh, on top of it yeah. you got snacks too <laughs> <laughs> I love that and I love the um I love the ethos of growing with us like grow with us and helping you know while you are small and this is your first year you know that every person that gets their hands dirty foregrounded is valued and feels important and that no task that they're doing isn't something that you all haven't done you know and wouldn't continue to do um so I love that and I'm sure Dr. Sunyeta also you know finds herself um saying those things to her team and and whatnot we have a, um 10 minutes left so I just wanted to go through a couple of questions that we have from the audience um, Dr. Senora, this one would be great for you. Um, uh, someone asked for businesses that have a brick and mortar location like Calabash, um, but are just starting their e-commerce processes. Like what are some lessons that you learned or can provide from, you know, starting out as a brick and mortar to, you know, making the transition to e-commerce? Um, <clears throat> I think that one of the things that can help is to, uh, initially hire someone else to put your website together um, and make it as easy as possible for them. Give them, you know, an Excel or Google sheet that has everything on it. Uh, they can backload it and then you can go through it. I would highly recommend going through every single item and permutation of that item to make sure that there are not mistakes. Uh, we've had that happen where our website person doesn't ne didn't necessarily understand our product in person. So there may have been times when something that was a large size was sold for less than a small size because he didn't understand, you know what I mean? Um, I will say that something that I learned, uh, I think you can learn something from anything. And uh, even when a customer is having an issue or something's going on with a staff member, whether you agree or not, um, whether that person is correct or not in their thought or assumption, there's something to learn. Um, going from a brick and mortar of managing individuals, because that's pretty much what you're doing all day, is uh, babysitting, uh, psychiatry, psychology, um, and with your staff, et cetera, to a uh, back facing or, you know, warehousing, like what we're doing, uh, pro your products, what ends up happening is there's nothing like having the people who are doing certain things for you change hats and do certain jobs, do all the jobs. Because at that point, if someone doesn't show up for work or they decide that they are working somewhere else and you didn't get the memo or whatever's going on, you can easily put somebody like cogs in a wheel, like insert someone there. Um, that makes a huge difference in being able to continue forward. If, if not everybody knows how to ship a package, they know how to package a package, but they don't know how to send it out, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem. Um, it's also important, like the ladies here were saying from Grounded, to know how to do all the jobs. Uh, I always, uh, you know, when I was younger, I've, I've worked for other people when I was in university and beyond. And it was always amazing to me that there were a lot of times I knew how to do things that the boss of that particular place, the owner, did not know how to do. And that is pivotal, is that you know how to do every single thing. That includes mopping the floor. 
that includes dealing with the health department or whatever you have to do. Like you need to know how to do that thing. Um, you, you as a business owner will find yourself in those positions more times than you know. Right now, my feet hurt because I, I sometimes now I'm getting in at like 9.30 in the morning and get out at 9.30 at night. And my family is like, do we know who you are even? And that's just how it is. Uh, you want this tuition for college paid. This is what mommy does. But the, the thing is, um, being able to hand those jobs off is only if you know that job well enough to teach it. You can't teach a thing if you don't know it. So that's absolutely pivotal. And with the e-commerce, that means that even the person who's designing your website, you should know how to go in the back end of your website and change, toggle little things. Also, always hold the keys to your website. So if you do have someone who's engineering your site for you, they can have passcodes and things to go in as a user, but you as the owner should have own the domain name. And then you should also own the keys in the back in case you need to shift for some reason. Um, I've seen, I've had friends who had their website person reserve the domain, do all the other stuff. And if the person, something happened to them or the person went out of business, decided to do something else or just disappeared, there was no way for them to get control back of that thing. That's terrifying, <laughs> but a great lesson for those who, you know, do contract things out. Um, I think so many times when we're, you know, doing things ourselves, I think that to to have those check-ins, even if, um, you know, in, in the case of Grounded, I think that you you all did your own website or you do most of your graphic design, things like that. Um, still making sure like that you maybe have someone who can touch on something and um, maybe it is like hiring a graphic designer out outwards of even if you yourself are a master at something like having a third party you know come in and contribute something and be like oh like that's I kind of like that or this is something that's maybe a little bit interesting or a different twist um, I think is important but yes yeah, always having the keys to your business and making sure that you know all of the things um, happening is so, so, so important. Um, we have three minutes left. Um, I don't know if either one of you all want to ask each other a question or if there's anything you want to say. I see some questions in the chat box. Mm -hmm. um, we can address a few of those questions. I think the last one is what are the challenges with regards to regulatory compliance? Next is data privacy payment processing, for example. Yeah. That's I think, I think for that question, um, we actually have cyber insurance. So there are, there is cyber insurance that protects like your business from all of those things that you just mentioned. And then in addition to that, we have a privacy policy, which outlines like the type of data that we collect. And we're not like, uh, we're not going to name any companies. But we're not like taking your information and selling it to, to Russians or anything like that. <laughs> have a privacy policy which is like important i think it's always like important to be transparent to your consumers so they so that they understand that because you know for a person like myself i think everyone's like tracking me and you know you go on a website and then you see their ad and then you it's you know it's, they're really getting into your head so that's like what we've done um for our business it's just we went to go pursue that cyber insurance and now we we're like we have cyber insurance for the year yeah. And looking at your, your, whatever site that you're, whatever you're hosting your site on, sometimes those platforms also have like a special type of security within their system as well. So doing your background research on um, like what site works best for you, not only don't just look at the templates and be like, oh, I like this, I'm going to do Squarespace, but actually looking at the terms and conditions and seeing how that best fits your business is important too. That's great. That's so great. Yeah, go ahead. Here's another question. Um, I think it says about uh, what methods do we apply to attract or obtain the sponsorships and strategic partnerships you have thus far? Uh, I, I have a question for uh, for Calabash and Dr. Sunyata. Excuse me, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Sunyata. Sunyata, Dr. Sunyata. That's so, that's so pretty. Um, oh. which, have you collaborated with anyone or have you done any like partnerships or what does that look like for you? 
Um, do you mean other businesses in terms of like other small businesses? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. I mean, um, we, as I had mentioned before, but maybe more specifically, I mean, we were raised on that where community is uh, the business, it belongs to the community. So uh, whomever else you can get started, there's lots of businesses that, you know, I'm not even going to name, that we were able to help negotiate their lease or give them a loan to jump into a business situation or co-sign things for them. And we've been doing pop-ups since before it was called pop-ups. We invited people to come into our space and sell directly to our customers as well. So yeah, this is super important for us all the time. That's great. That's wonderful. We, we just Thank learned you. something. We appreciate like all of the perspectives that you um, shared with us today. We've been like taking notes, mental notes in our head. Um, but to, I can sense a future I, collaboration once. Yeah, maybe there's I a, appreciate you guys. I, your your, um, your exuberance and ebullience is refreshing. I'm going to go into the warehouse now and just feel uh, sprung. I'm just really happy now. <laughs> Thank you. To answer, to answer the question, um, we, we really just like, you know, we've been ourselves this whole time and we want to just continue to be ourselves. So for all of the businesses out there that are looking to collaborate with another big business or another local business or anyone, another, uh, another uh, specialist or anything of that nature, just stay true to yourself and, you know, do great work because your great work won't go unnoticed and you know people word of mouth is like the biggest marketing avenue I think for has been for us just like people being able to spread our work and say hey like I received my grandma received a plant from Grounded for her 70th birthday or um I sent this plant to my to my mom uh for Mother's Day and so on and so forth but just being authentic and true to yourself has been like a, at least our strongest like asset we don't com we don't conform to anybody's expectations of us. Like if we, I only conform to Mignon's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's teamwork. Yeah. So just stay true to yourself, and all the right opportunities will come to you. And you know it's okay to say no to opportunities as well. So don't ever feel like pressured into uh, doing a partnership or doing a collaboration that isn't a good fit for you because. Again, like sometimes uh, the other party that might want to collaborate, they might have like a different agenda than what you may have when it comes to collaboration. So you just want to be clear about those types of terms and those types of partnerships. And again, like being able to say no is is uh, having it like has like a lot of power and a lot of strength behind it. And then also uh, vetting vetting opportunities and saying, hey, like this isn't you know, I want to modify this, this requirement, and I want to add something else on top of it based off of your worth. So the answer to that question is staying true to yourself and knowing your worth. Definitely. I heard something today that just said, um, no is a full sentence. And sometimes just that is all you need. And I think complete that sentence is yeah. Tony Morrison. Yes, Tony that's Morrison. Right. Yes. <laughs> Um, so anyway, well, I think that on that note, I mean, I think that hopefully everyone who's watching in will say yes to, um, you know, their future dreams of business owning. I think that what we've learned here is that, you know, it, you shouldn't hold back and definitely pull from resources. Um, there's a lot of really great resources that are available um, through, you know, our, our sponsors and collaborators here um, through the, Dizzy, uh, the DC Biz um, chat. And if you want to follow our participants um, on social media, check out their businesses at Calabash Tea and at Ground Period D-E-D, -E grounded um, on Instagram. You can't miss them both. They've had a lot of really great followers. If anyone has any questions for me too, you can find me at Libby Living Colorfully. Um, but again, just wanted to thank you all for, for speaking with us today and having this conversation. And then it's so admirable. I feel like I want to like go and tackle like a thousand things this afternoon after talking to all of you. So I hope it inspired um, others as well. So thank you for- Thank you for time. having me. Thank you, Libby. Thank you. Um, for everyone, thank you, uh, amazing panelists. Um, I really did enjoy the conversation as well. I, like Libby, um, li literally, I'm thinking about the next business venture. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, but thank you, everyone. Thank you to our partners. Um, please, everyone, take a moment to fill out our service. Um, your feedback is greatly appreciated. If you have any questions for us, uh, you know where to reach us. Um, connect with us, and we're going to answer all, your, all of your questions. Um, so without taking up too much time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.